Hey, you remember when I did those comic book unboxings last year? Yeah, me neither. It only took two videos before I burned that bridge and stopped receiving packages from comic book shops. It might have been the part where I told them to stop sending me crap and that I hated them, but that's just a guess. Well, surprisingly, another package showed up on my doorstep recently. And by recently, I mean over a month ago. I wonder why after a year I finally received another comic book package. I bought it. I bought this on a live auction app called Whatnot. My stepdad sells comic books and he's basically rekindled my interest in them. So I thought I'd support the family business and buy something during one of his auctions, which he hosts quite frequently. I'd say pop in there and just see what he's got whenever he's live at Watchworks Comics. What exactly is in here? Let's find out. There's nothing in here. Yeah, that's because I already opened it. Mr. Easter by Kit Wallace. It says he did the story, cover, and the art. I respect that. I like it when it's just a one person operation. The publishing company is Scout Comics and I've never heard of them. I actually haven't heard of any of these companies I've been doing unboxing videos on, which I like because that means there's plenty of third party comic stories out there for me to read. I impulse bought this because I like the cover art. It looks like the tricks rabbit in the middle of an Adderall binge. Problem is, they put it in this plastic case and I can't read the thing. Maybe if I throw it into the wall hard enough, it'll open. Yeah, I know about CGC grading. I don't buy comics often, but when I do buy them, it's because I want to read them and not for collection purposes. It does look pretty snazzy in this plastic case though. So I took the liberty of matching it by putting my other books in Ziploc bags so they also couldn't be read. Thankfully, I received another copy of the book for reading purposes, because this rabbit that looks like a rejected Invader Zim character makes me want to see what the story is about. A time-traveling rabbit that goes around killing people that also has a talking parasite in its hand. I dig it. You know, honestly, this would make a good video game. I know that comic books are their own respected form of storytelling and I really shouldn't be thinking about adaptations, but while I'm reading this, all I could think of is this would make a really good beat-em-up game. I mean, even the art style would transition very well. It kind of reminds me of those behemoth games, Battle Block Theater and Castle Crashers. I know everybody always looks for like movies and television shows whenever they're thinking of adapting like comics and all, but honestly, I'm at this point where I'd rather just have more video game adaptations. I mean, they've got that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles graphic novel Last Roan, and that's getting a video game adaptation, and I imagine that'll be cool when it comes out, but I digress. Uh, back to the book. So our titular character, Mr. East over here, he's the third best assassin in the universe, and that talking parasite on his hand, well, that's Frank. And the two of them go around throughout the book, and they just time travel, and they just do hit jobs, and it's scattered full of weird, wacky, and crude humor. A good example of the crude humor would be every time Mr. East jumps through time, uh, he gets the runs. And apparently time travel hurts a lot. And as far as, like, weird, wacky humor, the first hit job they have, they end up in this space bar where, for no no explained reason at all, everybody's dressed like Elvis, including the guy they're supposed to hit. And the weird, crude, wacky art style really suits the setting well. You have all these weird aliens in these space bars, which is probably my favorite setting you could have for a sci-fi story. I've always loved space bars since I saw the first Star Wars movie. And I mean weird, wacky art style as a compliment. It says that uh, Kent Wallace, he did the cover art and the art throughout the book, and I just really love it. What I love even more is the choice of colors to comment it. it just makes everything pop, this wide variety of like dark purples, bright pinks, greens, and yellows. It, it just fits it so well. You see, normally I'm not a big fan of crude humor in my comic book stories, but it works in this. I mean, the general premise is a talking rabbit that kills space aliens, so... Might as well have some fun with it. I would go into the story more, but I've only read the first issue and that's basically the general premise. They just go around and they just kill space aliens and weird stuff happens. There's four other issues. I looked on Scout Comics website and I'm probably gonna go back on there and buy the rest of the issues because normally I like to read my comics for free online, but since this is a smaller third party publisher, I think I might as well show Kent Wallace some support and actually buy his books. I mean, I don't know how much of the proceeds he would get if I bought the book 
looks off of Scout Comics website, but I imagine he would probably see more money from that than if I bought something from DC or Marvel. And I'm also always down to support comic book stories that just aren't about superheroes. I mean, I like some superhero stories every now and then, but I started realizing that I read a lot of manga and none of the manga stuff I read is superhero related. Well, besides One Punch Man, but you know, that's a parody on superheroes. So yes, I am pro-independent comic book publishing if they keep putting out more wacky stories like this. And from the looks of Scout Comics' website, that appears to be their memo. I think there was one on there about Dracula that I'm kind of interested in. But enough advertising for a Scout Comics. They're not the ones that left a $50 check in the box. That was Watchworks Comics. I mentioned earlier that he's always uh, advertising on whatnot. And I find that funny because when I get to the back of this book, it mentions Scout Comics is partnered with whatnot, so... I don't know if Scout Comics, Watchworks, and whatnot are all in cahoots or something. I don't know how this industry goes, but I find it funny. Watchworks Comics, like I said, he's auctioning all the time on whatnot. Pretty good prices. I know CGC stuff is usually pretty pricey, but I think I only picked this up for like $30. I mean, I don't normally go for CGC stuff because, well, I like to read my books instead of just looking at them on my wall. Speaking of which, I do have to find where I'm gonna put this at on my wall. So yeah, I'm gonna be putting a link for Watchworks Comics and Scout Comics in the description. It's the least I could do to show some support. You know, in all honesty, I didn't write away of how I was gonna end this video because it's three in the morning right now on a Monday night and I couldn't sleep because I slept when I got home from work and now I'm wide awake. So yeah, I'd say thanks for the uh, comic book stuff, but I paid for it with my own money. It's really hard to show off this stuff because of how glossy the covers are, but oh well, I think that looks good for thumbnail purposes. Oh, hey Muffin, come here. I could always just hold the dog up for thumbnail purposes. That seems to get clicks. Yeah, I don't have breasts, so I can't use cleavage as clickbait for my thumbnail, so I'll just keep using the dog. But anyways, see ya.